Hey, David. Um, there is a lot of hype around AI, obviously, but also agentic AI at the moment. I wondered if you could share how Salesforce uh, is approaching uh, this technology right now. Uh, last year, we introduced Agent Force, um, uh, our digital labor platform um, at Salesforce. This is our agentic AI layer on top of our data and CRM applications. Um, what it does is it leverages uh, conversational AI to really transform how business operate. Uh, if you can think about it, essentially lets uh, organization build intelligent, trusted, customizable AI agents. These agents work with humans together and combined they drive more efficiency and uh, enhance the customer interactions. What, what sets you apart from everybody else who's doing agentic AI in business processes at the moment? Yeah, I think um, what sets us apart is these agents, the way that we design them, they are easy to use. Um, they're not just technology, they're fully embedded into something that is manageable and deployable. Uh, we ship uh, pre-built agents with uh, skills and actions so that you can easily stand them up to solve customer questions like, look up an order information, verify customer information, summarize a case. Those are very uh, standard use cases that we see. But the way that we approach that, it's very differently. Um, Agentic AI specifically, the way that we built our agent force is built on the foundation of trust, right? Uh, I think for enterprises, they want to make sure that when the human agents are using AI, information is protected. So when you send information to the LLM, the information in a way that it is not retained and, and for future training purposes, uh, at the same time, the conversation coming back and forth, you need to make sure that there's no hallucination, there's no toxicity. How do you how do you deal with hallucination? Because I mean, I think that there's a misconception that hallucination goes away if you do enough training. It doesn't. I mean, it's a factor of AI structure, really, and the way AIs work. I mean, is the is it that you just make sure that you still have a human being involved in the process? Yeah, I think the accuracy comes in multiple parts. Uh, I, I do think that uh, when you ground the agent, you will get more accuracy. Um, I think depending on which LLM you use, there's always some variance coming from it. Uh, and, and you want to make sure that those variants are filtered, right? So in a sense that if there are responses that are not coming back the way that you should be, you need to have a way to be able to filter them. And this is where the trust layer does. In the telecom market, is that a big opportunity here? I, I think that's a huge market. I, I think by the nature of the communications industry, it is a hyper um, competitive market, right? It's very fierce. I, I think everybody is trying to uh, improve the EBITDA to drive margin. Now, I think what where AI can help is really come in to help the service provider, one is to grow revenue. Second, it's really to reduce the operation costs. In terms of growth revenue, AI agent can also come in um, uh, to help the sellers, right? Especially in the B2B SMB space, where the seller needs to be able to respond to customer requests, to be able to generate quotes very quickly, to be able to deliver the services very quickly so that they can receive the revenue very quickly. That is a big use case for that as well. And that is absolutely the key right now. That's one of the biggest trends, not a technology trend, but an attitudinal trend in the carrier market right now is, hey, we're not going to save our way uh, to the end of the 21st century. We've got to work out how we can actually efficiently uh, make more money and sell more products. So, Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I still remember one of the customer tells us, um, what is the best experience for sellers when, when it comes to creating a quote? It's not about going through a bunch of flow screens to capture what the customer need, configure what the customer need. Um, the best experience is for the seller to be able to shout at uh, a machine and say, this is what I want, you do it for me. Uh, I think we are getting into this by leveraging Agent Force agent experience to be able to take this conversation, take this voice, to be able to convert into something that is uh, meaningful 
um, for, for, for the seller as well as for their customers. It's refreshing for me to hear you talk about this in such a pragmatic way, because the thing which is different here is that there's still a human involved in that sales process. From our product planning perspective, we will be launching a number of pre-built um, agent with skills and actions that our customer can use right out the box. So these actions would be uh, industry specific. So think about these digital workers. They know the industry really well. So when you tell them that, uh, when they look up information, they see a num um, the data with a bunch of numbers, uh, the agent will know that, ah, oh, this, is, this is actually a phone number or this is actually a SIM card number. So that metadata is really important. And you do that on a, on a vertical basis. You do that industry by industry. That's, that's incredibly important, isn't it? Because uh, actually telecom, which is what I do, is, is sort of the layer underneath the vertical industries. But you have to have that bespoke knowledge. It's, this is all done in a very easy um, uh, administration UI as well. Um, any Salesforce user will be familiar with the experience. They can go in and create, test, deploy them very quickly. David, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. It's a very exciting. Uh, obviously, this is a huge opportunity for Salesforce. I mean, you're sitting on top of this uh, huge uh, customer base, but also gigantic data set. And it, it's almost like AI is giving you this kind of shim layer to pull the value out of that uh, for your customers. Fantastic. Wonderfully explained as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for your time.